And so after um, Queer as Folk, what, uh, what, what inspired you that? Did you want to go back to theater? Did you, what did you want to do? Well, I, I really wanted to come back to Canada and make a TV show of some kind. And, mm -hmm. I, and I had a number of uh, projects that were commissioned and, and Bibles and pilots and stuff that never mm -hmm. went anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, always in the end because they were too gay, mm -hmm. whatever that means. But uh, when I was doing Queer as Folk I, and living in LA, and I would do a lot of walking when I was in LA, I was like the only person in LA walking. I started to get all these weird back pains and the sort of pins and needles thing going on in my butt and down the back of my legs and it got worse and it moved into my feet and came up the front of my legs into my groin. And I went and saw my doctor and he said, you've got spinal stenosis, which is really weird because you're very young to have this and it's advancing very quickly. Well, by the time the show closed, I had a real problem. I, I like walking a block would put me in tears. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was this like almost a year of tests and ultrasounds and exploratories and all this kind of thing. And then I literally became a shut-in. I was taking eight to 10, 12 Percocets a day just to function, just to, to not be in pain all the time and get through my basic day and putting on weight and not walking and being very unhappy. And um, it affected a lot of uh, professional and personal relationships in my life. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, I was trying to hide it for a very long time. I didn't want anyone to know. I, 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 I um, uh, ignored it myself for as long as I possibly could. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the process of what are we going to do about this and seeing different doctors and surgeons and things went on and on. So there is this blank period from 2006 when the show ends to almost 2010, when I, 2009 when I turned 50, mm -hmm. that is just a, a haze. Mm -hmm. A haze. I mean, I wrote um, True Love Lies just before that started. I was working on that at the end of Queer as Folk. Mm -hmm. And that did very well for me in England. And then the next thing I wrote was Cold Meat Party, which I was trying to write while I was in this thing. And it's the weirdest play I've ever written. It's very dark. It's very, um, very angry, mm -hmm. very painful. It's not a, it's not a, a fun play to watch. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also was one of the few plays that didn't do as well in Manchester as everything else did, and certainly that production that happened here at Factory didn't do very well either, but I didn't like that production very much either. Mm -hmm. So there was that, but my work was very much informed by uh, the disease, by what was happening at that time. And so by the time I finally found a surgeon and he went, oh, you know what, we can, we can, we can help you with this, we can do something, and had the surgery. I had been through probably the blackest, most hopeless period of my life. And I was also flat broke because I was paying out money like nobody's business for all these tests and everything and also the dental work that I was having to repair my jaw at the same time. So mm. it was a very, very scary period which I'm only really just crawling out of now. Mm. It's taken the last seven or eight years to start to get back on track and get things out there and let people know I'm alive and I'm not necessarily that same guy I was in that period, mm -hmm. you know, and that kind of thing. And, um, uh the process now, like how are you feeling now? Like uh, you're, you feel obvious. So after the operation, are you 100%? Or? Yes, after the operation, it was like, I'd, it's so weird. I mean, it was mm -hmm. like I'd never been sick. I mean, I know guys like that who, who were like that with HIV and AIDS who literally were on the brink of death, who had told everybody they know what they absolutely honestly thought of them and run up their charge cards and just done everything. They, who cares? I'm dying. And then they got better. <laughs> And they were like, oh my God, I have to face what happened in my life, right? I'm going to live. That was not what I thought was going to happen. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, life throws things at us and sometimes we live through them. And then, then the thing is, then we have to deal with whatever happened when we thought we weren't going to live through them, right?